SpaceX Starlink's direct to sell service versus AT&T. Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. Coming to the end of some fireside, actually. That smokiness is so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX, but a brand new feat that they just accomplished where they were able to connect a phone, an Android phone, a Samsung phone to a satellite to a satellite and receive 17 megabits of speed. That is amazing. Just think about that. They're connecting an unmodified phone with a satellite sitting in low earth orbit at 550 kilometers. I wanna compare that with what AT&T has been doing with their billions of dollars in funding that they've been receiving to help us in the rural community. I saw an article over at Interesting Engineering is I think the rag and what it's called. I want to read to you some of the article. Then I want to get into some of my commentary. And most importantly, I want to hear from you down in the comment area. What do you think about all of this? Before I get into it, I just want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up. They are free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink content, I put together a playlist. Maybe I'll put a link here. About 250 videos that I think that you would enjoy. Check them out when you're done watching this video. So now that all the housekeeping is done, let's get into this article. And then once again, I wanna hear from you. Starts out by saying SpaceX has achieved another feat, but this time not via rockets, but wireless data transfer from the sky. CEO Elon Musk recently shared an update about peak download speeds of 17 megabits per second from a Starlink satellite to an unmodified Samsung Android phone. An X user commented, quote, that's incredible. Fixed wireless networks need to be looking over their shoulders, question mark. Elon Musk replied to him with a measured response saying, quote, no, because this is the current peak speed per beam and the beams are large. So this system is only effective where there is no existing cellular service. Now, that's the case right now. But how about when there are tens of thousands of these satellites in low Earth orbit. Anyways, it continues. This revolutionary technology functions in collaboration with wireless providers. SpaceX and T-Mobile have already announced a groundbreaking partnership to leverage satellite connectivity. Musk's vision is to eliminate dead zones worldwide, offering an alternative where terrestrial cell towers don't reach. The latest breakthrough follows SpaceX's successful transmission of the first text and tweet using Starlink's direct to sell or DTC satellite connection. The Elon Musk led SpaceX aims to offer global cell phone service and plans to launch the direct to sell or DTC service for customers later this year. Musk retweeted SpaceX's post, adding that no special equipment other than a mobile phone and a satellite was used for the connectivity. On January 8th, SpaceX Starlink successfully transmitted and received the first text message via T-Mobile's network spectrum using their new direct to sell or DTC satellites. On January 2nd, SpaceX launched 21 Starlink satellites with the new DTC feature that enables mobile phones to connect directly to satellite. Now, this is what I was talking about. The DTC service or the satellites that have DTC built into them, there was only 21 as of January. Now there's a couple of hundred, but there's still very few in comparison to the almost 6,000 satellites that are currently in low Earth orbit. Orbit. Bear in mind, the DTC service or the satellites that have this technology built into it, it's like a cell phone tower in outer space at 550 kilometers. So keep that in mind. They are communicating to an unmodified phone from 550 kilometers in comparison to a cell phone tower that's sitting, you know, a few miles up the road from you. 
That is amazing. The article continues, with the DTC service, voice, text, and data services can be provided to remote areas without ground infrastructure. The Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, has approved this project as a pilot program, and SpaceX aims to provide internet access to smartphones in the US using T-Mobile's Spectrum. Connecting standard cell phones directly to a satellite poses unique challenges, primarily due to the satellite's high speed relative to stationary ground towers. So just think about that. These satellites are passing overhead at 17,000 miles per hour. It's not like a stationary cell tower. These are cell towers, once again, moving at 17,000 miles per hour. That is unbelievable. Think about that. SpaceX engineers overcame these obstacles with sophisticated antennas and cutting edge software algorithms making the impossible possible. SpaceX envisions a future where everyone can use their phone without specialized equipment, regardless of location. While still in development, SpaceX Starlink's DTC service aims to provide voice, text, and data in the most remote corners of the globe where cellular infrastructure isn't an option. SpaceX Starlink has rapidly forged alliances with global telcos like T-Mobile, Rogers, Optus, One New Zealand, KDI, Salt and Intel extending the reach of the revolutionary service across multiple continents. Now this is once again, I think amazing. And I think in the future, I do believe telcos should be worried. Now, Elon Musk poo-poos on that type of idea, according to what he said on X in response to that person asking, should these telcos basically be shaking in their boots? And I think the answer to that is yes. He says, well, right now it's only one beam and the beam is really wide and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that is the case when you only have 100 satellites that have this service built into it. Well, how about when you have 40,000 satellites that actually have the service built into it, the DTC service? The the antenna that turns this satellite basically into a cell phone tower. What happens then? I'll let you be the judge. So let me bring up a post from Elon Musk on X and he said this. He said, SpaceX just achieved peak download speed of 17 megabits per second from Satellite Direct 2 unmodified Samsung Android phone. Now what's interesting is he shows the actual connection. Now if you guys don't know, you know I'm a Unix guy, they're using iPerf3. It's basically a utility, it's kind of like a ping, like just think of it as a ping. You can do a ping test but then you can also so specify how much data, what is the size of the data, all this kind of stuff. But it also shows one thing that I think is just really important here, very important. Now, obviously we can see that the speed was 16.9 megabits per second. Let's call it 17 megabits per second. But look at the jitter, 1.181 milliseconds. And if we look at the jitter, some of the jitter is lower than one millisecond, and some of them is like one, 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.1. One millisecond of jitter. Now, a lot of people talk about latency and they talk about ping, but they never talk about jitter, and jitter is more important. You're gonna say, why is it more important? I'm gonna tell you to go watch this video that I made, right? I'll give you a synopsis. Basically, think of jitter as the mean, or let's say the difference between the fastest and slowest of the time that it takes for your data to get to its destination and then back again, an acknowledgement packet, so that you get a, let's say, a good piece of data to your location. It's kind of like ping, pong, ping, pong. It sends a piece of data, and then the software sends an acknowledgement packet back and saying, hey, the data was good. If it wasn't good, it'd be like, hey, it's not good, resend it, and then it'll send it again. Well, that is an error. That's kind of like a CRC error, let's just call it, All right, in short. Basically, the jitter you want as tight as possible. So if you're getting a ping of 30 milliseconds and then 40 milliseconds and 35 and 28 and 36, you have an average, let's say, ping of 35 milliseconds, but your jitter is like, 10 milliseconds, right? It's that difference between the fastest and the slowest time. So even if you have really good pings, right? Maybe they're not consistent. Consistency is everything when it comes to data transmission. You want consistent data.
So if you have a ping that's sitting there at 30 milliseconds and all of a sudden you have a couple of pings at 800 milliseconds, that throws everything into the trash, right? So this is showing one millisecond jitter. Why is that important? I'm glad you asked. Because the latency that I currently get, if I do a speed test using SpaceX Starlink that I've been using for 28 months, is anywhere from about four milliseconds to 10 milliseconds of jitter. Jitter, that is that, once again, that difference. Here we're showing one millisecond of jitter connecting a phone into space at 550 kilometers. That is bizarre to me. I would personally think, if someone was to ask me, I'm a network guy, right? If someone was to ask me what would be the jitter, I would say it'd be like off the chart because you would be connecting and then all of a sudden you would lose some connection and then you would connect again and then lose some, the satellites are traveling 17,000 miles per hour, but it doesn't happen. So I was thinking about this and I said, you know what, let me ask ChatGPT, how much is AT&T receiving in comparison to how much is Elon Musk, SpaceX receiving to connect us in the rural community with like fiber, right? With doing what they supposed to be doing. Like Elon Musk took on the banner of, we're going to connect rural community. We are going to bridge the digital divide. We're gonna bring high speed to the people that never had it before, right? That's what we're going to do. Well, AT&T, for example, said the exact same thing. 15 plus years ago. How much have they received? So what I did is I said, you know what? I'm gonna ask this question to ChatGPT because we know ChatGPT only has data up to 2022. And I said, you know what? That's okay. I just wanna know what is the number? How much approximately has AT&T received? And when I asked this question, it said this, as of 2022, AT&T has received approximately $3 billion in government subsidies and funding through a program aimed at expanding broadband access to rural communities, such as the Connect America Fund, which is that CAF fund, and the Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, which we all know about, which is the RDOF fund. So they have received $3 billion. I'm like, okay, $3 billion to AT&T, that's fine. How much has Elon Musk got so far for the exact same thing? Well, ChatGPT just had a very hard time with this. They didn't just, they didn't wanna answer it. Okay, it's that politically correct bullshit. It went all around the barn trying to not answer this question. In the end, it said this, as of my latest update, January of 2022, SpaceX Starlink's program had received over $1 billion in government funding, primarily through the Federal Communications Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, or the RDOF, and contracts with agencies like NASA. $1 billion. That includes contracts with NASA. I said, okay, you're getting into NASA. I didn't ask you about NASA, right? but that's what they do. So I said, all right, excluding NASA, how much has Elon Musk SpaceX Starlink received? So what did ChatGPT say? As of 2022, SpaceX Starlink's program had received approximately $885 million in funding through its Rural Digital Opportunity Fund or the RDOF. Interesting, $885 million. That's an interesting number, right? I did an entire video on that. What is that number? That is the number that the FCC just denied SpaceX Starlink, the exact amount for funding. They just denied that just the other day, like a couple of weeks back. They said, no, we're not gonna give you the $885 million because we think that by 2025, you're not going to be able to reach a 20 megabits per second upload speed. We believe. We believe this, so we're not gonna give it to you. They didn't do this with any other telco, only SpaceX Starlink. Why is that? Eh, I'll let you be the judge. Anyways, when we come full circle and we take a look at my situation, I'm rural America, right? I am not sitting in the backwoods somewhere. I'm literally right outside of the city, like suburbs, let's say. There is 250 homes in my community. They're five acre tracks, they're larger. So AT&T doesn't like that because when they install fiber, they're not getting as many homes as they would like. Now, they received $3 billion to basically get people like me fiber. Have they done it? No, they really haven't. 
Now, if you were to go to AT&T's website as of today and type in my address, it comes up with, quote, fiber is coming to you soon. What's interesting here is that same website 15 years ago, 14 and a half, right around there, let's call it 15 years ago, said the exact same thing. Fiber is coming to your location, to your address, coming soon. This is God honest truth. And fiber has been sitting at the D-slam right up the road, right in the box for over 15 years. They've been taking that fiber and then turning it into copper feed and then sending it to the community through DSL. And then finally, once DSL got old, through Uverse, through Uverse, instead of just dropping the fiber from the can to the homes, the last mile. That's what they're getting paid to do is the last mile, those connections, but they don't do it. Even though they got $3 billion plus, 3 billion as 2022, who knows how much by now, let's just call it $3 billion. And SpaceX Starlink hasn't got a damn penny. SpaceX Starlink is actually giving me service. Do you see why a lot of times I talk well about them? I talk good because it has been a revolution to my family and a lot of other folks out there in the rural community. Whereas these telcos, these massive telcos that are getting billions of dollars to do the exact same thing have been doing shit. Those are the facts. I wanna know your facts. <laughs> Down below, what say you? Are you in the same type of situation? What do you think about this whole AT&T thing? What do you think about SpaceX Starlink one day having tens of thousands, tens of thousands of wireless or cell towers in space? How does that bode for the cell community or the cell or the telcos, right? The T-Mobiles, the AT&Ts, the Verizons and all the rest. Remember what Elon Musk said was a measured response. You don't want to go and throw T-Mobile or AT&T or Verizon under the bus just yet. But I can, I could almost guarantee you those telcos are afraid because they know, they know that once he has tens of thousands of these satellites in orbit that do have that DTC built into it or have that cell tower built into it, doesn't look good. It does not look good because those cell towers are gonna to be up there for many, many years, whipping around at 17,000 miles per hour. And those cell towers that they're putting up, they're not putting up very many more. I haven't seen a new cell tower come up in years, in years. T-Mobile just bought a cell tower near me that used to be the Sprint cell tower out of business, right? Where T-Mobile took them over and now is updating that to 5G from the old Sprint garbage that they had. That's it. Anyways, guys, what say you? Down below, let's have a conversation. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget my teas and my merch and everything else. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.